Okay everyone, back again with an update on this rocket stove project. Um, first off, let me say um, Happy New Year to everyone. I uh, wish you guys all the, the best 2014 you could dream of. Um, hopefully my 2014 looks as good as it appears it may be. We'll see. <laughs> hopefully it's not too bad. I'm getting married this year. So anyway, on to the stove. Um, we got a few things that, that I'm going to cover today. Um, number one, you see that I pulled out the the fuel feeder. Um, this is where I was putting the sticks in. This is going to be converted to pellets today. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Let me kind of show you what I have in mind. I'm going to build a basket real similar to this. Now this is a really crude drawing obviously. The pellets will fall inside of here just like that and accumulate. Um, once they get small enough to burn through they'll drop down and hopefully burn here on the bottom of the, the burn chamber. Okay, these top sections here will be welded into the edges of, of this feeder. So, that's, that's the plan for now. I'm going to use some 3 16 rod that I have. You know, this is all mild steel, just your traditional um, low dollar steel. I guess you can call it low dollar. No steel is low dollar, but um, that's what I'm using. And just for a disclaimer, because a, a lot of you guys are new to either my channel or new to this project, and you know you don't really know what I'm I'm doing here. Um, this is all mild steel, just regular standard um, hot rolled steel. Um, this is not ideal for for a rocket stove, and I'm going to tell you why. And it's simple. Um, any kind of mild steel. Um, even if it's like a chromoly, um, which has, a, you know, which is more of an alloy, um, it's kind of between. Um, they scale when they get hot and cool off real fast. And what I mean by scaling is it's real similar to like rust. It's like what you see here. See how it looks all flaky? That's scaling. Okay, that's what happens to seal when when it gets exposed to high temperature environments and it deteriorates really really fast. Okay, some of these rocket stove builds you'll see people use um, stove pipe. You'll see them use um, I don't know uh, various coffee cans, various different thin thin walled sheet metal essentially um, because it's already round and they can use it for their burn chamber. That stuff is going to burn out immediately. Okay, the inside of this fire fire area reaches temperatures well over a thousand degrees. <clears throat> and ideally, um, the top up here, you know, because once you have the barrel over the top of this, the heat's going to go wrap around it. This thing should be upwards, you know, the very top of this would be upwards to around five to 700 degrees. So you're dealing with really extreme temperatures. You can get that stuff red hot, then it's going to start scaling and corroding. Um, Ideally, in a situation where you're building something like this, you're going to want to use, if, you want, if you're dead set on using metal, you're going to want to use high heat resistant alloys like nickel. And anything, anything that's got nickel in it, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different metals. Um, there's diff various different grades of stainless steel. Stainless steel is a possibility, but you got to get the right grade of stainless steel. I'm not going to get into to all the different types of metal because that's not what this is about. And that's a long video and I don't have all the information. So, <clears throat> But there are different stainless steels. Some of them are much more corrosion resistant, corrosion resistant under high temperatures than others. Um, some of that stuff is more weldable, more workable than others. Um, but then you get into your nickel alloys, like your um, one metal, for instance, that we've got in, that we're, we're waiting to get in, it's called nichrome, N-I-chrome. Um, and it's a wire, typically, you can, you can get nichrome mesh. But basically what nichrome is, is if you look inside your, your toaster ovens, not like a toaster oven, but like your toaster for you know toasting your bread. You have those heating elements, even in hair dryers or some of those old space heaters. They have the the wire in there that glows red hot. That's in the chrome. Okay, that stuff is is very very resilient to heat and under long periods of time. 
and, and it's something that we're going to experiment with as well but it wouldn't be used for structural purposes it would be used for like a burn basket or something like that um, but there is other metal um, you, you're just going to have to look it up um, just search google nickel alloys and, and you're going to come up with a laundry list of different nickel alloys and more information that, than you probably ever wanted to learn um, some of it's going to be very scientific and you're not going to know what it's talking about but just keep searching websites and some of the websites will keep it pretty pretty basic and let you know which ones are for which ones are better for different purposes like which ones are more weldable which ones are um, more corrosion resistant than the other ones so on and so forth so anyway uh, I got I went off on a tangent a little bit today's project is going to be to convert this to pellet build this um, and what else are we going to be doing? Once that's all together, we're going to we're going to start doing some more testing to find out what our temperatures are with with the pellets. Um, after the pellets are, you know, after we get up to temperature, we're going to start playing with um, the air fuel mixture a little bit. The fuel is is going to be what it's going to be, but I want to find out if my air inlet is. Uh, you know, optimum for the the amount of, you know, for the size of the combustion chamber as well as the amount of fuel. Um, that's why all of this is very primitive and there's no structural. It's just the brick laying here because we need to play with this a little bit. We need to find out, you know, wh what happens if our combustion chamber is bigger. What happens if our air in inlet's bigger? What if the air inlet's smaller? What is it going to do? And find that that sweet spot in the you know the air fuel mixture. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people, when they build these things, are just kind of going off of specs that they found online. Our goal is to to answer those questions ourselves. Um, we're taking ideas, we're we're jotting down numbers, we're trying to find maximum efficiency efficiency and share that with you guys. This is not a final product by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about this technology, definitely subscribe. Keep an eye on our channel because we got a long way to go with this, okay? Um, don't worry about the materials where we're using for structure. Um, this, like I said, this is a prototype and we're going to be making some changes and, and so just sit tight, hang on and, and collect as much information as you can for, for your builds or, or whatever, you, whatever you might want the information for. So anyway, we're going to be doing that and we'll also be, um, like I said, we're, we're going to adjust the size of the, the combustion chamber. So I'm going to have to build something because right now the combustion chamber is sized specifically just so I can stack the bricks like this. So I didn't have to use anything metal or whatever to help support this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these side bricks out so that they're just hanging on by a quarter of an inch on both sides. Which what that will do is give us a four by four and a half or yeah four by four and a half inch burn chamber or air inlet. Um, I'm going to do that with the burn chamber first and then I'm going to do it with the air inlet and see where we're at. Okay, um, so I need to build something so it doesn't just all collapse and fall down while I'm messing around with it. So that's the plan. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using that 3 16 rod. I'm going to also be using my, my Harbor Freight compact bender. Um, I got this a long time ago, a little over a year ago, um, I believe. I've never even really used it. I just threw some metal in there and bent with it. But we're going to be using that today. Sorry about the lighting being real poor. I might get my halogens a little bit closer so I can show you guys that process. Um, I'm going to be setting this up with, if you look here, it's one and a half inch die. Okay. And I'll show you how to put that in there and, and set that up and and we'll get bending. So and I, I got a bunch of pieces to bend and then just a bunch of stuff to cut up and oh I'll be using my, my Everlast Power Tig 210 EXT welder. Um, if you guys are not familiar with my channel, if you're new here because of the rocket stove stuff, check these guys out. The link will be in the description. Um, Good machine hasn't let me down. I've got three of their machines. They, they work great. So check that out. Um, the reason why I'm going to be using a TIG welder versus a MIG welder is pretty simple. Um, essentially with this burn basket, 
I, I don't want big gobs of, of welding filler metal at every single joint, but I don't want real sketchy tack welds either. Okay, with well a TIG welder, what that does is it's going to allow me to apply a lot more heat, get a lot more, well, you know, a lot more liquefic liquefaction, I guess, or liquefying the, the actual base metals and melting those together and, and less filler rod um, so that the, each joint is, is pretty clean and not a big ball of MIG wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. Plus, I just want to use my TIG welder on something, and this seems like a perfect project for it. Um, so, we'll be doing that. So, I'll talk to you guys in a second. Some more light over here. Um, let's get this all set up. I've got to remove this this big die that's in here. Um, the way you're going to set this up is, is two things. I've got to pull this pin, remove this die, put this die in there. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to readjust this roller here and bring it as close as I can to this, this die set. Okay? Um, on this other side, hopefully I don't get all in the light, we have this block. This is a holder block. Now this thing kind of sucks. Um, it, it's not going to hold it tight, but it's going to hold it tight enough. So that's something that, that you're going to want to probably, we'll probably readjust it to this pinhole um, depending on the clearance that we have. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is just making a bunch of U shapes and then I'll cut them to the, the size that they need to be and then I'll make, hold on I'll show you. I'm going to make these U shapes, a bunch of them, and then I'm going to create these flat pieces like that and join them together with one rod. Okay? So, it's going to be a three three piece project. And the reason I plan on doing it in three pieces is I, I could always just take it here, bend it here, bend it around here, and then bend it here. But I'm just worried about consistency and I think it would just be easier for me to have two flat pieces to lay flat on my welding table and weld them together and then work on this little U-shaped thing. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, I could probably do three flat pieces and then just bend this one, but um, I would be able to do it with this bender, number one, and I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to put you guys on the tripod so you're not going to have a really close look at what I'm, I'm doing. I'll try to get you a better look than this one because that's pretty much where you're going to be um, while I change the die set but you're going to be put back there when, when it comes time to do the bending, so I just need space. So let me get you on the tripod and let's start switching these dies. Again, sorry about the poor lighting. I've got a light, fluorescent light right above us that would come real handy right now, but it just, I think the ballast is out on it. And it is what it is. So, pulling this pin, sliding this die set out, putting it back here on the rack. Again, one and a half inch die, putting it in here, dropping the pin in, pulling this pin, bringing this as close as I can, dropping the pin in. Okay, now this block that I was talking about definitely can be adjusted. You know what, this is actually too close now. Um, so I'm going to pull this out and put this, let me try it here, what I need to be concerned about is getting a straight rod in like my finger is and the way that was didn't allow me to get that in there properly. So I'm going to take this out and this has a little height stopper that goes down in the bottom holes that you might have to reposition when you repin that. Let's see here if that's going to work. It may. Let me go grab a rod real quick. Let 
Let's see, it's a little too close. So, here's what we're going to do. This block here can be put in multiple positions. If you look at it, see how it's offset? It's closest to this side, second closest here, third closest here, fourth closest here. So I'm going to try to put this side in, even if I've got to flip it upside down just like that. Get this out of the way. Okay. Let's try this again. And it works. Okay, see now it's all the way in there. Now I should be able to do my U shapes. So let me put the tripod out of the way again. So I can swing that handle. Not that I really need that long of a handle on this, but I don't feel like readjusting. So now because Again, I haven't used this. I'm going to leave myself enough overhang sticking out here just so I can make my first U. Um, then I'll be able to, I'll have my U done and then I can adjust for the second one to try to limit the amount of waste that I have. So I'll hold it as flat as you can and then I'm just pulling this around. Pretty simple process and looks like you guys are going to be in the way again. My handle is hitting the tripod. <laughs> So, let me put you guys in a different position as I'm in the way of the light now. Okay, I think that's going to be okay. Now, you guys are still in the way, but I'm able to bend that last little bit by hand. Uh, so, I'll swing that all the way open. Now I'm not able to remove this the way I was hoping for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this pin, the follower bar, and pull it out through there. I'm going to put that in and put that back for the next bin. See now this is not a, a complete 180 degrees, but that's fine because this is not a precision piece and I could just squeeze that with my hand and get it to where I need it to be. And that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to create a few of these. Um, I've obviously got a lot of, of hang out the, the you know, wasted material here, so I'm going to adjust next time so that I don't have that much. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what this total length needs to be. Cut this, cut this, and then figure out next time so I don't waste so much material. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, so I got the first one cut. And I, I kind of looked out because the part that I didn't need that I cut off what I thought was going to be waste ended up being pretty damn close to perfect to what I need you know to encase the sides okay now as I get closer to the bottom I'll have to cut them down but actually I probably wouldn't even have to but you know they, they fit really well where, where I was hoping to put them at so um, that was about eight inches from the block all the way around. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try one at eight inches, and and we'll see how how well that turns out, and see if I can get another one of these pieces that's that's just about right, you know, as far as fitting in there. That was actually kind of lucky. <laughs> so I shortened up my handle. Um, this bender, um, you got two positions. If you want to drill it out, you can get more positions than that. But you have a short position and uh, the longer position. So put this back in here. I've got this already marked at eight inches, and I'm lining it up like I said. That eight inches is going to go right at the edge of this block. So it's in there. 
Now it's time to bend it. I'm sorry that I was in the way, but I've got to bend it. Oh, you know what? I have something going on here that I forgot about. This bender's got an adjustable bend ring on it. Which is essentially just a bolt in this um, oval shaped washer so that you can use it as a stop so all your bends are the same. I don't need it for this, so I'm going to remove it. It was just kind of thrown in any position. So like I said, I haven't, haven't even used this until now. So, that's good. I can actually just pull that out with this arm straight. Put this back. I was having problems putting this arm back in a position, and what that was is this square block needs to be raised up a little bit. So, we got our 90 degree, I mean 180 degree bend. I don't know, I probably didn't say 90 degree. It's a 180 degree bend. I don't need to bend this with my hand, it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go over there and, and cut it to match the other one. And hopefully we'll have enough of this leftover piece to, to fit it across here like I had said. So I'm going to stop this for now, you know what I'm doing. I'm going to just bend a whole bunch of these and we're going to put them, I'm actually, here's what, I'll show you what I'm going to do. The pellets are pretty small. The pellets are about 3 16 in, in diameter and I guess they would be about like this. I'll show you them in a second. You know, from the tips of my finger to here, that would be about the size of a pellet. So, I don't want them to just fall through this thing until they've been burned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these as a spacer so for thickness. Now, when I go to weld it, each one of these little U-shaped ho ho yeah, hoops, I don't know why I can't speak, um, will be spaced out with one of these bars and then welded together. I hope I can show you that. I've got big gorilla hands, so. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys in a second once I get all the pieces cut out and we start getting ready to weld okay, this up. Okay, everyone. Um, I lost a huge segment of my videos because my battery died. Um, anyway, I got the basket done. Um, if you look here, I also expanded the, the burn chamber. See how I slid the bricks out a little bit? Um, so now we got roughly four inches by four and a half inches. Burn chamber, two inches by four and a half inches. Air intake, okay? I haven't run anything yet. Um, I sealed up the bottoms here and, and mortared all the way around it. I'm using this stuff right here, which seems to be way better than the stuff I was using in my last video. Um, Dewall plus cement, high temperature. Trade it for 3,000 degrees. It seems more like a, I don't want to say it, more like a, a cement versus this stuff that we had. Okay, this stuff here started shrinking and doing weird stuff. This says it won't shrink. I guess we'll see. It's still real soft, but it says to heat it up. So, anyway, um, this is pretty sloppy. It didn't turn out nearly as good as I wanted it to. So, but here's the basket. I used my Everlast Power TIG 210 EXT, just like I said. Um, at some point, it, this just started making a mess. So I just didn't really care about it too much. But it turned out the way I needed it to. Um, hopefully the gaps are, are small enough for it'll work. Um, drops inside here. I'll be right back. I'm gonna put the light on on the camera so you can see okay, what's going on. So now that I got some light on, you see the, the two ledges there? On the on this side here and this side here, it's the fire brick has like about a quarter of an inch lip there. I'm basically dropping this in 
and it's resting on those, okay? Now the only problem I'm seeing here is that I'm going to have to get it pretty centered. I'm probably going to have some pellets spilling around because it doesn't, it's not a great fit. Um, if this seems to work out pretty well, I can come back and, and make sure that this fits tighter. So that, that's, that doesn't bother me nearly as much as it, sh as it may bother others. Um, but like I said, I can, I can fill in those gaps later. Um, the main part is I just needed it to fit. Um, I just want to try this at this point. I'm probably going to have a lot of pellets fall through those gaps, but we're about ready to find out. So um, I put that rod in there to make sure that I can get it out. It's low enough where I can still put the lid on it. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the bag of pellets. And this is how big the pellets are. Okay. I got a big monkey hand. Here, I'll put it next to this the square so you can kind of see the measurements here to give you an idea of how big these are okay just in case you've never had any pellets before and I'm just going to dump a whole bunch of these in here so I'll be back I'm going to fill that up and then I'll be back when I'm getting ready to light I made this a up. huge mess of pellets um, but let's get this lit about it's almost 6 o'clock in the morning. I've been out here all night working on this. So, forgive me that I'm making a mess. I'm kind of unorganized. It happens. Do 
Okay, you see how that's working? It's basically, you know, those are pellets on the bottom that fell through the gaps. Probably going to have a lot more of that. But as long as it keeps burning, it's okay. We'll have to refine that, obviously, so that it doesn't do that anymore. Um, right now, I just want to see how well this keeps burning. You can see the draft is really, really good. All the, all the fire is going off to the direction it's supposed to. Um, I'm going to pull this cap off to show you we don't have any smoke coming out of here at all. And before we did, now we don't because the pellet plugs this hole up. So now we don't have any more issues with um, smoke or draft coming down here or anything like that because the, the pellets block the restriction or block the air restriction. So now it's all just coming from here where it's supposed to. And I've got all my gaps sealed up completely now. So everything should work real good. So I'm going to just let this thing run the way it is. I'll be back with you guys in a second. We could check some temperatures and see how things are going. Okay, everyone. Um, this is the final segment of this video. Here's what's going on inside the, the burn chamber. The basket is lit up real real nice and neat. Um, it looks like the, the pellets, as they're, you know, initially what was happening is in the basket they were just dropping down pretty quick. And now it seems like they've almost compacted inside of the, the very base of it. And the whole basket seems to be on fire now versus before it was just the bottom. So it seems to be working actually better. The ash that's coming down from there is really small. Now you see that pile of, of pellets right there that's burning. The reason why that's happening, and you just saw up towards the top here, right up, right up there. Here, let me get something smaller to point. Right up there. There's a big gap right there between the basket and the, and the burn chamber, so the pellets are falling down there. Um, if that gap wasn't there, we wouldn't have those pellets on the, on the bottom doing that. Um, now, I don't know if that would be good or bad, because it's actually helping them falling down there like that is actually helping this to burn. You know, there's fire coming from the bottom and fire at the top, so um, I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad. So, but I do know that it's something that we have to address um, when it comes time to do the final design because um, for ash collection and stuff like that, we don't need flaming pellets down in the, in the ash. Um, so, we'll figure that out. That's not going to be that big of a deal, though. So, here's what we got going on. Let's start checking some temperatures. I've been checking it. This thing's been running for a half hour. Let's check the pellets. This, this thing was completely full a half hour ago. I could still touch this with my hand. And I would say we're down, I'm gonna go ahead and measure that so we don't have any, any questions about how far down it is. We are five and a half inches down. Okay, and realistically, it's more like about five inches down. Okay, because that's about where the level was. So, five inches, and this is a four by four opening ballpark in a half hour. I don't know how many pounds that is. Go grab that amount of pellets, weigh it, and you'll figure out how much this is burning every hour. Double that number, and that'll be what's burning every hour. So, and I'll do the math on that at some point. Anyway, um, let's check some temperatures. I've been checking the temperatures all along. And the last time I checked them, we had 542 right here. We'll check that number again, see what we went up. Okay, so we went up again. We're at 553. Okay, 
The next spot we checked was right here. We're at 590. So we went up again. That's a big jump. Okay, next spot I checked the upper portion of this metal plate. And we are at 310. That's an increase as well. And I checked here. Okay, so we got top brick, second brick, and then a half a brick. I'm checking this. Hold on. I'm checking the center of the center brick. Okay, we're at 265. That's a little bit of a jump. We were at 252. Now I'm checking right here at this seam. We're at 269, might as well just say 270 because it's 269.9. Um, that's an increase as well. That's a 10, 10 degree increase. Okay, and then I'm checking the surface up here. Really? Holy smokes, that that's actually cooled off substantially. Okay, that's 120. That's not good. <laughs> well, I'm checking right here. That's 72 degrees. That's actually good. Okay. But that actually, I messed that number up. Um, That's actually a pretty significant drop in temperature. So, let me check this first one again. Oh, you know what? Was I on Celsius like a dummy? Yes, I was. <laughs> okay, so let me let me check these again. That's 272. That's actually jumped up two degrees in just that that time. We're at 239. That's actually pretty much holding the same now. Now that I'm actually on Fahrenheit. Um, last time it was 238. So, and then over here. We're at 161, um, which is ballpark where we were at. It says 163, so it's fluctuating a little bit. Um, and that could also be due to the gun. Um, let's check this first one again. Five fifty-six. Yeah, so we're going up. We're still climbing. Um, we're about an hour and five minutes into having this run and those are the temperatures that we're having on the outsides of the brick. Oh, oh I needed to check one one more thing. Um, I'm going to put you on the tripod for this because I don't want to burn the hell out of myself. Um, see this square? I've had it tucked in here and the reason why I had it tucked in here is because I want to see how hot, I, how hot this square is getting so close to the top of the burn chamber. Okay, because I know how hot it is up here but when we're, when we're doing the final product for the rocket stove, um, the barrel that's gonna go over the top, which is that compressor right there, tank, compressor tank, is only gonna be about two inches above, ouch, that's hot, two inches above the, the riser. So ideally we would want that around six, 700 degrees so that you get plenty of radiant heat inside your home. So I'm gonna pull this out of here and see where we're at. Put you guys on the tripod real quick. 
Dann voll Bohrer. <lacht> So the outside area here is 97 degrees. Yeah, I can pull that out there, no problem. Oh, this thing's cooling out fast, but it was at 300 degrees. Yeah, the bottom side was actually even hotter than that. It cooled off extremely, extremely fast. So I would, I, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to say that this was at about 400 degrees. Okay. Now the thing that we need to take into consideration about that is when this thing is in set up to run the way it's supposed to. The exhaust is not going to be on the top, okay? The exhaust is going to be down here on the bottom. And the barrel is going to be over the top, the compressor tank. So the air has got to come up, it's going to hit the top surface of that compressor tank, wrap around this tower, come down, and then exit out. Okay, so that means this entire compressor tank that's surrounding this is going to just saturate full of heat because especially the top section because that heat rises and it needs to it's just going to pocket there okay um, the idea is is to get the exhaust temperatures down as low as possible and to be perfectly honest with you the way this is sitting right now for it to have 162 degrees here is really good okay that means it's running super clean and I know that I just went outside and there's absolutely no smoke, zero whatsoever. Um, I went out earlier when I first started it, zero smoke, nothing, nothing at all. So the pellets are seem to be working pretty good. Um, let's see if this has gone up at all. Five fifty-five. So we're almost plateauing. It's still a little bit higher, but what it seems to be that's the temperature we're getting. Okay, now um, I don't remember the exact number we were getting with the sticks, but I do remember that it was somewhere in that ballpark. So I don't know that we're running any hotter, but we're running a lot more consistent. Okay, um, I do believe we're running hotter up here. The bricks don't seem to be getting any hotter, but I do know that we're definitely running hotter up here because this was only, well, I'll have to go back and look at my other video, but we're at 282 right now, and yeah, so we just incri increased another 12 degrees while I've been talking. So I'll check this again. That's 248. Yeah, that jumped up too. Okay. Yeah, that jumped up 10 more degrees as well. So, it's still climbing in this upper section. It's still climbing down here, but it seems to be leveling out a, a, just a tad bit. So, I do know that this top section is burning hotter than it was with the sticks. Um, like I said, it's so much more consistent too. Um, it, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to in the chamber with the exception of the, the gap that's allowing those pellets to fall. So with that being said, I think the, the whole pellet idea, the pellet feed, it, you know, there's, there's nothing you can say other than it's a success. We have, we're able to grab this. It's warm, but it's not nothing that, I can leave my hand on here for a long time and it, sorry, and it won't, um, it's not gonna burn me. There's no smoke, no smoke, none. Okay, nothing coming out of there. Now once that burns pretty much down, you might get a plume of smoke or something like that. But that's why you're gonna run a gasket on here so that when it does run out like that, that it doesn't smoke out your house or something. So, now also with that being said, um, 
the hopper that we'll design will be completely different than this. So we'll design it in a way to hopefully, um, hopefully make it so it doesn't backdraft out of there, you know, where the smoke's trying to rise up, where the smoke will go out the direction it's supposed to. <coughs> One, the fuel's actually running out. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I know this was a long video, but there was a lot of information. It would actually have been a lot longer if the welding stuff would have actually worked out. Um, sorry about that. Um, but you saw the outcome. Um, I'm sure you guys know how to weld if, if you've been watching my channel at least a little bit. <laughs> um, the, the idea is that I just welded a bunch of little bar stock together. So, I think our next step now, um, I was playing with the, the air fuel mixture. It seemed to be running okay at two thirds. Um, I opened it back up and it seems to be running I don't know, maybe a little bit better. It, it, it's real subtle. So this, this air inlet here is, is, seems to be pretty close to ideal. Um, now I am going to try a different burn basket just because I want to I try something a little bit different and see how it works. Um, see if we get any, any difference as far as temperatures are concerned. But the design is kicking butt. Um, and I, I've got nothing negative to say about it. It's running clean. Um, the pellets are feeding. It, it's doing everything it's supposed to do. Um, the only thing that, that I won't know is how warm this will get once it's finished. And the, only, and the reason that is is because I'm going to need to put that compressor tank around this. So I'm going to talk to my partner on this slash customer. Um, I know we wanted to try a couple of, couple other configurations with this, but I want him to see this pellet system and, and then we'll go from there. Um, I, I definitely want to try some other systems, but I'd also like to get a, a prototype done so we can see how well it heats and, and, and kind of go from there. Um, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Like always, subscribe, comment, like. Um, what else? Go like our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter if, if you use that. Um, check out AlvarezMetalWorks.com. All those links are down in the description of the video. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And talk to you guys later.